Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, if you're new here, my name is Cameron. I talk a lot about a lot of different things. Um, tarot, astrology, perfume, spirituality, life, trans topics, like all of that. All of that. So today though, we're going to be talking about perfumes. One more little note though before we get started. Thank you so much for 350 subs. I know in the grand scheme of things, that's not a lot to a lot of people because so many people have like thousands and millions even of subscribers. But I'm really happy and like adoring of the small little community that's forming here. I especially love when you guys comment like just sweet things or questions or even disagreements. Tell me like I love interacting. That's kind of what I'm here for, for connection and interaction on the internet. Um, even if it's a little parasocial, you know. Um, but the reason we are here today is to discuss perfume in particular and to talk about three new perfumes that I just received into my collection. Um, before we really get started, it's funny because I think the last perfume video I told you I was really focusing on what I had in my collection and I was actually doing that um and I was trying to do a no buy because I was broke but I did just get a job <laughs> so because I did get a job now and I'm gonna be working like full time because I'm not in school anymore um my money mindset is like shifting I'm like okay girl you're not broke you need like one to two paychecks pay off that credit card and then we're good you know um so I was like well treat yourself a little bit and it's weird because I hadn't even I hadn't even gotten hired guys and I just had this like sense and it wasn't I truly like don't think it was arrogance or cockiness I just like I had applied I had gotten here to where I am now I had applied and then I just like left it like I just left it for a couple of weeks and I was like hmm I hope I hear back but if I don't then I guess like in a couple weeks more I'll start applying but I just didn't like feel like I needed to oh my god I'm rambling um but then I got it and but even before I got it I bought these even though they're cheapies like they're not super expensive anyways um but it's like I don't know something in me knew that my like little money drought wasn't gonna last long speak that blessing into your life guys be like I have money I have coin I got abundance no lack um but that's not why you're here today. You're here for perfume. So let's actually start talking about perfume. These are the three I've welcomed into my collection recently. And I actually like all of them. You know, sometimes you like perfumes initially and then you don't like them over time. So keep that in mind. These are mostly my perfume first impressions. One is a reintroduction to my collection though. So that one I can speak more aptly on, like fully. But I guess let's start with this baby. This is Asian Provocateur Original EDP, and I have, I made a short on this the other day just because I looked cute. I was in my Halloween costume, my Fran Drescher Halloween costume from the nanny, um, and I was like, I should come on and film a video for you guys and talk about the scent of the day. So you can go watch that if you want something more brief, but I had wanted this for a long time now because honestly... I like slutty perfume. <laughs> like, I love slutty perfume if it's like slutty and skanky in like a in an unexpected way. Cause to me, this is totally slutty and skanky in an unexpected way. Like, it's not. You know, some people talk about Angel as like a stripper scent. It's not slutty and skanky in that way. Like this, the erythritol sweetness. This is slutty and skanky because what you would normally associate, a lot of people I think, which is weird because I don't always have that association, but a lot of people associate rose scents with like grandmas. And this is a vintage, vintage rose. Like a total vintage rose. Um, but it's skanky. It is darn skanky. Ho shit. And the way I know it's ho shit is because I hadn't even said a peep and I asked my dad just smelled my perfume and he was like oh that's like that stinks but not like it not like it stinks like it smells bad but he said uh quote unquote it was giving grandma the jj 
So do with that what you will. <laughs> but in terms of what I actually pick up from this, so it's kind of like, I saw someone in the comments on Fragrantica describe it this way because I looked up the keyword oak moss because there's no oak moss in this. But for some reason, there is vetiver and patchouli in this and I was getting some sort of like in the deep dry down. Or maybe there's no patchouli. Maybe it's, I don't know if there's patchouli guys, but there's definitely vetiver in this and there's cedar. And in the deep dry down, I was getting this sort of like oak mossy quality to it, but there was no oak moss listed. And I was like, okay. So I think maybe what happened was that vetiver and that cedar combo was giving me something with, along with the animalic moss too, we'll talk about that, was giving me some sort of like oak mossy quality, which made, makes this feel, honestly, this feels like a, like a old rose sheep breath, like, but like standard rose sheep breath. And there's nothing really sweet about this fragrance. This fragrance, I'm going to spray it because I'm wearing something else right now. And I just want to like, just want to, we're going to spray it on a tissue. Why not? Right. I just want to like refresh, but there's something, um, yeah, it's so dry. There's nothing really like juicy or sweet about this. Maybe a little juice, but there's nothing, uh, yeah, there's nothing really sweet about this. It feels quite dry. And I've noticed in fragrances, like vetiver tends to do this thing where it kind of dries up a fragrance. Um, or sometimes vetiver will kind of like, there's like the hayish quality it can lend. Or sometimes I feel like I, like if you guys know White Diamonds on Rouge, I feel like that gave it more of a soapy quality. But in here, I could see an argument for like a soapy sort of quality, but more than anything, this is a skanky vintage rose. And um, I think the reason it gets a, its skankiness, cause like rose on its own to me doesn't go indolic or skanky. The skankiness is to me provided clearly by the musk. The musk in the base of this is completely what you think of to me when you think of like an animalic musk. Um, because I think so often nowadays in perfume, so there's like animalic musks, there's floral musks, there's clean musks, and then there's perfumey musks. At least those are like the four kind of categories that my brain goes. It's not floral, like, yeah, you could say it's floral, but it's not like a Jovan musk. And it's not, it's not clean, clearly, because it's skanky, but it's not perfumey. You know how like all designer perfumes nowadays, like for example, I feel like this, there's no musk, I don't think in the notes, but this kind of lends itself to like, like it has that perfumey musk. We'll talk about that. But, and this isn't even like a designer perfume of today, but most designer perfumes, like your Donna Born and Romas, all your shit that's in like Ulta Sephora, they have that, that like, in, it's like an indescript, yet like it's in every fragrance sort of musk. No, this is an animalic musk, like skanky, like some body aromas musk. It doesn't smell bad, but it smells, it's suggestive of sex to me. It is. Um, the funny thing is, would I still wear this out? Absolutely. Are you kidding me? I, I don't really care. Because also, like, other people's associations. I'm saying what you might, like, get. I'm kind of projecting what I think the world might view of this fragrance. But other people's associations and problems with things aren't my own. And I kind of really like this. I'm interested to see how this develops over time. Like, if it macerates. And also just how it plays with my skin more. I've worn this, a, like, a couple times this week. Um... But yeah, it's like a, it's kind of like a rose chibra. It's a skinky vintage rose. And it's like a rose chibra. If you took the, instead of actually oak moss, if you took the oak moss or replaced it with like a vetiver base and with that cedar, it kind of takes on an oak moss quality. But yeah, it's like a dry, skanky, vintage rose chibra. The skankiness coming from like this animalic musk. There's, oh, that's another thing too. The opening of this is quite spicy. I think that the spice has calmed down. When I say spicy, don't think cinnamon spice. Think um, it's saffron in the top of this. So think like if you've ever had something spiced with saffron, it's very that. It's not really cinnamon spicy. Um, but there is a spicy quality to this in the beginning that I think over time kind of dissipates. But yeah, that's kind of what I get from this. So yeah, if you like skanky 
scents. If you want to smell like a tramp, <laughs> lovingly, by the way, I'm like sex, very sex positive. Um, if you want to smell come hither, but also if you want to smell like a, just someone's grandma, like a, like a, cause that's the funny thing is I think some people would think skanky, but there's also this part of me that's like, that's not skanky at all. This smells like someone's like loving grandma who loves like traditional perfume, you know? But if you like something like that, if you like any of the, the qualities I've listed, then you might want to give this a shot. Um, I quite like this. I just love that it's unique. As I'm exploring, getting the opportunity to explore a lot more vintage in my collection, um, I'm really, really enjoying myself. Um, and it's just old school perfumery, that sort of vibe. And I think, ooh, is this by Jacques Cavalier? This might be by Jacques Cavalier. I might be wrong, but I think this might have been um, made by Jacques Cavalier, who does a lot of other... Oh, no, this is... I don't think this is Jacques Cavalier. No. The reason I have Jacques Cavalier in my brain is because I was looking at Fenty the other day, and he did that. Sorry. Wrong, wrong perfume. No, this is not Jacques Cavalier. But yeah. Okay, I'm, I've been rambling about this for enough time. Um, we're going to go ahead and hang it up. Okay. Next one we'll talk about is this one because this one is a reintroduction into my collection and I love this stuff. I have a small bottle to start with um, and I just love that stuff. I went through that so quick. I must have gotten it in like, I don't know, maybe February, January and it was gone by like March, April. Like it really didn't last that long for me. Like I've used that shit up quite quick. Mm, this is Mariah Carey's M and this is to me like this is easily this is such an easy signature scent for me that I like would wear and feel so unique in and like uniquely me but also feel so like accepted in that sense I'm not really seeking approval or acceptance but it's like it's a when I say signature scent you know like that whole like idea that you don't want to offend someone with your fragrance I don't really like care or play into that too much but I could see like, like in a signature scent, that's what you want, you know, um, or what a lot of people might want. Cause some people want to stand out. Right. But in other ways, some people just want a signature scent, something that they could take wherever they go with. This is something that I feel like I could take wherever I go. The one thing is I haven't tried this in summer. There is C notes in this, but there's also, um, amber patchouli incense going on. So um, I could see it might be heavy in the summer. I've never tried it, but I've tried this in this. I've had this the in well now in the fall, transitioning to winter. I've had this in the deep winter, and I've had this in the beginning of spring where it's still a little cold, and it was perfect. And it just makes me feel so comforted. It's comforting, sweet, but unique and deep at the same time without being too heavy. So let's talk about what's actually in this Mariah Carey's M. I also do just love Mariah Carey and it is Mariah Carey season. Also, I hated the bottle at first, the small bottle, the one ounce, because the one I got, the sprayer was broken. And so it would just dispense the product out horribly and the cap didn't fit on top of it. But with the large bottle, I haven't had any problems with it. But yeah, so this is just such an interesting, unique, but likable perfume to me. Um... There is C notes. So there's a, a little bit of a salty marine quality. Um, <clears throat> there's marshmallow. So you get a lot of that like sweet um, toasted vanilla powderiness going on. So there's already an interesting little juxtaposition going on there. And then you add in the incense, the incense heart. Um, trend alert actually, because now that I'm looking at I guess there's only three fragrances, but trend alert for me lately of what I've been loving is incense notes in perfume. There's another incense perfume I want to get. It's on my Christmas list. We'll see if I get it. It's Infusion Diaries by Prada. But yeah, trend alert for me, incense lately. But yeah, so you already have a lot going on here with unique notes in the sense of marshmallow. To me, it feels kind of unique. The C notes feel kind of unique. And the incense all together, you're like, what? And then it's on an ambery base with like patchouli as well. It's really, really pretty. 
In some respects, they're not the same, but in some respects, I get a sort of Victor and Rolf flower bomb quality to this. I think I told you guys I kind of wanted to get a bottle of flower bomb, and maybe I will down the line because they're not the same fragrance, but this kind of fulfills like my this kind of fulfills my want for like a patchouli floral saccharin scent, if that makes sense. Like a sweet floral patchouli. This kind of fulfills my need for it. There's also tiare flower in this. That's why it kind of fulfills my need for it. Because there's still florals in this, guys. I think it's tiare flower and maybe gardenia. But there is white florals in here. They're just hidden between all the amber and the incense, the patchouli, and the marshmallow. Um, and obviously the C notes at the top. I would say the C notes at the top and the white florals can kind of get lost between all of this. Like between all of the other stuff. But it's still there. And it's just unique to my nose and it's just something that really does it for me. I don't know if you'll like this because I know a lot of people try this and then like I've seen people be really disappointed by it. But I tried this when I guess actually when I first tried this, I didn't like it that much. And then I just kept reaching for it and grew up like it just and then I ended up going through that little bottle just so quickly, not even like three months, I think that I went through it. Um, so I had to purchase this. It's been on my repurchase list for a while and this is the first perfume that I've bought and repurchased so it, that's saying a lot because there's oh there's other collections or there's other perfumes in my collections that it that I would repurchase with a heartbeat like um I need to get another bottle and especially a big bottle of Dior Addict is one example same with probably like when my hypnotic poison runs out I'm gonna want to repur repurchase that what else when my obsession runs out I'm gonna want to repurchase that um, when my dull intense runs out, I'm going to want to, you know, like there's stuff I'm going to want to repurchase, but it also just made it so, um, easy to repurchase because this is a cheapie that I was just like, I need to get another bottle. And so I just went off the ledge and I miss the smell so much actually. So happy to have this again in my collection. This is pretty much a signature scent for me. Um, I guess not in practice because I just got this brand new big bottle and I only had this small bottle, but I was wearing that the fuck out of that small bottle during senior year <laughs> of college. I was just wearing that and people really liked it too. I think because it's sweet, people don't usually tend to have an issue with this. Um, quite likable, but still so unique to me. I think this gives like what Cloud like gave at one point in the sense, because Cloud was fun in the beginning before everyone wore it. And before I knew it was like a Baccarat Rouge sort of dupe, I thought Cloud was so unique. And I was like, I'm so different, like lavender and like all this. Like, I just swore I was so unique. Like, I was like, lavender, cotton candy, like da 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 da. No, like, no, you're not unique, baby. But <laughs> which is, there's no problem if you want to smell the same as everyone. I just have a big ego. And I know that about myself. I know I have a big ego. And I'm the bitch who's like, oh, I'm so different, even though I'm not that fucking different at all. Yeah. So. This fulfills my need for difference and sameness at the same time. It's like the, it holds the tension between wanting to fit in and wanting to distinguish myself. Okay, I just went really psychological with this perfume, but I love this stuff. Also, the bottle is darling. I don't, I didn't like the execution in the small bottle because it just did, the cap didn't fit on and then the sprayer was broken. But this one in the large bottle stunning okay i've talked enough about this let's talk about our last perfume today which is one that i'm actually wearing oh and it is so pretty and so good and at least right now it's only 15 bucks for 2.5 fluid ounces on most places i got mine off ebay um and a couple of funny little notes okay first funny note is the box is damaged but i actually had kind of like given up on this fragrance on getting it and I had gotten a refund already because the seller I purchased this from like gave a tracking number, but then didn't drop off the item. And he still hadn't dropped off the item by like the day it was supposed to arrive. So then the next day when it was already past the arrival date, I was like, okay, like, let me just get a refund because it didn't come. And so I got my refund already and I was like, okay, like maybe it just wasn't meant to be like, maybe I'm just not going to get this perfume. That's okay. Um, and then it showed up in my box today so it's like I don't know if he sent it out if he did send it out and then they just didn't I don't know what happened but basically I got this for free unintentionally I I think what he actually did is he sent it out he gave me a refund and he sent it out because he felt bad for making me wait which if that's the case really sweet but either way it was 15 bucks and it's not like this was some 
expensive fragrance. So yeah, that's why my box is a little uh, beaten up. But this is uh, by Belegance. Belegance? Be Belegance? Maybe? Um, and it is an EDP called Midnight Promise. I love the the gold and purple motifs going on here. I don't like the execution of the bottle. And actually, I think it's really interesting. Uh, both of these have, if you can't tell, a butterfly motif and a purple motif going on. Love that. And it's funny because for some reason, when I associate with butterflies, the three colors I associate, even though there's way more, and I think maybe orange is way more popular of an association, but the ones I like, I love a white butterfly, a blue butterfly, and a purple butterfly. Um, but yeah, I just like the execution of this one better, even though it is plastic. I think, because I love, ah, I love a stunning, simple, like, square bottle. We don't have to get super different. Like, I love a really nice crystalline bottle too, but even just a simple little, you know, as long as it's not from like a niche perfume brand who thinks they're doing something so different by doing that. But I love like a simple, like this would look really cute to me if it was just like a matte black lid. And then maybe there was one uh, like gold uh, sort of stripe on it to match this. But okay, why did I purchase this perfume, right? Random ass $15 perfume you've probably never heard of. So if you guys don't know, I follow this blog on Tumblr. I don't use Tumblr at all, but I will always refresh their damn blog because I love it so much. Um, it's a fragrance blog and also not just fragrance. Like they do fashion. They talk about like queer things, like just fun, you know, like art culture, um, a fun person, fun personality. Um, Fruit Chuli on Tumblr. Go ahead and look up Fruit Chuli, like a Fruit Chuli perfume. And I, you know, the first time I discovered them was probably, um, when did I discover them? I think I really discovered them probably like about March when my obsession started taking off in perfume. Um, and I just remember just scrolling through that damn blog being so gagged and so interested in what they had to say. And I didn't agree with all of their takes. Actually, one funny thing is I think I, re I remember asking them once, uh, like about their favorite sandalwood perfumes because I was in my sandalwood era and they were like, I like snooze, I don't like sandalwood. But then recently they posted that they, they're in, entering their sandalwood perfume era, which is just, it's funny. It goes to show you, everyone's like fragrance takes are so different. And normally I usually agree with them on stuff, but we're not always in the same era of our perfume journeys either. Like maybe I was like, like sometimes I might be in a more floral era when someone else is in their gourmand era or when someone's in their woody era. You know what I mean? But I just love their blog and like looking at their takes because they take uh, such a, I guess the word I would use as a de-influencer approach to fragrance, like an authentic approach to it. And like, there's such an authentic love for fragrance itself and the history of it and the culture of it. Because perfume is a product, yes. And especially nowadays, perfume is a commodity, yes. Do I participate in that? Yes. Um, but I also participate in my view in like a deep love of fragrance and the art of fragrance and how it makes me feel my emotional connection to it, my associations with it. And it's a part of my life now, like in, inex like inextricably, you can't like separate me from my perfume. Um, and I think they take a very similar approach to fragrance and just art and culture in general. And plus they're really funny too. And have a lot of ironic humor. So definitely check out Fruchuli. But they put me on this. They were like, fall, you need this. You need this for fall. And I was like, okay, like, don't gotta tell me twice, 15 bucks. And so what's this? What does this give? Um, This in the first, I'll be honest, the first 10 to 20 minutes, maybe 10 to 15, I would say 10 to 15, honestly, cause it, it settled down uh, pretty quickly. The first 10 to 15, it smells like bug spray to me. It, like there's something about it and maybe we'll blame it on the vetiver uh, patchouli combo there's something about it that reads like like stinky bug spray but that quickly quiets down uh and then it's just beautiful after that um oh that smells so good oh wow mm. so after that let me tell you what i get and then i'll tell well let me tell you what's yeah, let me tell you what I get and then let me tell you what's in it. So um, 
when I was reading through reviews on uh, Fragrantica, and then I think I was also looking at some posts on Fruchuli, someone said that this smells like, um, like a, <laughs> kind of like a crystal shop where you walk in, it smells like all incensey, and it smells like the lady who like runs the crystal shop, um, and like wears like heavy perfume, but like it's still really like delicate and like mature in a way. So I definitely get that association. Um, and then I think someone else said it just smells like straight up cinnamon inc uh, incense sticks. And I also get that association. And the reason is because after that like beginning sort of like a little like I didn't like the opening of it. It like very quickly to me just turns into like a cinnamon incense scent and patchouli, cinnamon incense and patchouli. And... There's no vanilla listed, I believe. Maybe there is. Actually, maybe there is vanilla in the um, notes, but it's like cinnamon, incense, and patchouli, and vanilla. So it's almost like the base of this fragrance is like what is like most prominent, the base and the mids of this. Um, and it's really pretty on my skin. I don't know that I would spray it on clothes just because I don't know... Like, you know how perfume is pretty much, or maybe it's not, I don't know. But in my brain, like, I like to spray perfume on my skin because I think of old school philosophies of perfume where your natural oils are supposed to, like, meld with it. Or, like, some people would wear perfume, like, when they went to go smoke, for example. So it's meant to cover up smells um, when people smoke cigarettes or weed back in the day. Um, so I like to put it on my skin to see how it evolves. And... It's just so pretty on the skin. It's so romantic is the word I would use. There's also supposed to be like rose in this and I think orange in the top. And again, I think there's vetiver in this, but really the storyline I'm getting is just a whole lot of cinnamon, incense, patchouli, and rose. Um, and it's quite pretty. And it's like perfect for this time of year. This feels like a perfect fall scent where this feels like pretty year round, maybe other than summer. This feels like, this feels like fall to me too, actually. Maybe you could wear this in the winter, but this feels very transitional to me, like fall. Maybe winter to spring would be pretty for this too. We'll see. I wear kind of everything whenever anyways, but um, this is, this to me feels like fall, maybe winter, but really fall. It's kind of like, um, you know what this all kind of reminds me of? If you ever walk into a Michaels during fall where you kind of get that whiff of cinnamon, it kind of reminds me of that actually too. Like, not pot pourri, but yeah, just like that smell of the craft store during um, during Michaels, like a little cinnamon broomy. And it's, it's cheap, guys. It's $15. I think the reason why this is so cheap is because if you don't know the backstory, I also learned this from Fruitchuli's blog and then also from watching... I looked up a bunch of the videos from the, that the company had put out years ago um, on YouTube. It was put out by a former doctor who was kind of like bored, I think, and was like, who, like loved perfume and was like, eh, I just want to like put out my own fragrance, you know? And I think they thought it was going to be like really like take off, like pretty like easily, but I just, it never took off really. And so there's a bunch of like back stock everywhere of this perfume. Um, and... I don't think a lot of people have really caught on that it's actually a really nice perfume and maybe a lot of people haven't caught on because they they spray that first initial blast and the initial blast is a little off-putting but then you wouldn't like this if you don't like cinnamon and patchouli but but then it's like that nice cozy cinnamon incense-y fragrance so I really like this stuff and for $15 are you kidding love loves it it makes me want to try more cinnamon scents I think I like cinnamon around fall, especially as you get into winter, because I was like so, like cinnamon's not a note that like makes me like cream my jeans or anything. Um, if perfumes are spicy, I like it, like obsession spicy. Um, but it's not like, like I'm not like a whore for spicy perfumes, especially because there's been spicy perfumes that like have really challenged me and I just haven't been able to come around to. Like uh, one that comes to mind that a lot of people love is Femme by Rocha's and uh or rocha rocha femme by rocha um i just can't bring myself to like that guys like i really tried and i don't think it's even the animalic 
musk of it all. I think it's that just that damn cumin note. And I'm trying to grow up and I'm trying to like it. Well, I was. And then I just realized, no, some things aren't for you, Cam, and that's okay. So I just, I'm kind of uh, weary about like cumin notes. And then because it was cumin and then clove and cinnamon, it kind of like, I think that fragrance and that bad experience kind of like threw me off from spicy perfumes, but no, no, this is really nice. And it makes me want to try more spicy perfumes like, like Youth Do, for example. Youth Do is also on my list. And Youth Do has been like described as like that Coca-Cola, but cinnamon cosmetic scent, powdery scent. But this is really nice and is really like hitting my cinnamon. It's scratching the cinnamon part of my fragrance cravings, the brain. Yeah, really nice, guys. And, and like I said, 15 bucks. Actually, all the stuff I'm showing you is pretty affordable in my, at least for me, um, who is not being paid a lot of money. Like I'm not, I'm not rich right now. I'm still, when I bought these, I was still in my college uh, salary. So, and not working full time. Um, so this was 15 bucks. This was like about 30 bucks. And this was also about 30 bucks. Um, so if any of these scents in, uh, interested you, I would check out eBay and see, uh, what the deals are on them because eBay usually has some good deals. Fragrance Net also has good deals, but I'm kind of anti Fragrance Net if I could get it on eBay, just because Fragrance Net takes fucking forever with the shipping. And I get it. It's like free shipping or whatever. So I shouldn't be complaining, but eBay also usually has free shipping at a reasonable price. So I usually just get my fragrances, or at least these days I've been getting my fragrances from eBay. Anyways, I'm ranting. I spent 31 minutes on three perfumes. <laughs> I hope this was fun to you guys and you enjoyed a little bit. Um, and I hope to talk to you soon. Um, I'm not sure what perfumes I'll get next. I'm going to focus still on paying down, or at least I'm going to try focusing on paying down my credit card. Um, and also Christmas is coming, so I might not really be purchasing as much things for myself. Well, I am going to need to purchase new like work outfits, um, but I might not be purchasing a lot of perfume, I guess is what I'm trying to get out or like extra things um, because I am going to be trying to pay off my card and then the, the holidays are coming. But uh, all of that is to say that these are three that are new to my collection that have kind of like quenched my thirst for something new and that I'm happy to be adding to my collection. I really don't dislike any of them. There's nothing that I find like unwearable or off-putting or like even this little skinky ass rose. Like I love it. I'm like, mm, you know, and I think, I think honestly, I think uh, if you were with someone and, and you had this on, especially in a bedroom context I'm rambling but they'd be like mm, you smell good you know <laughs> uh come closer come hither but yeah those are the, the three scents that I have and I hope to see you guys in another video soon three uh, 33 minutes talking about three perfumes <laughs> okay guys we'll talk soon love you bye